Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Jesse. I'm a tutor in Melbourne and I also make GAMSAT videos as well. This one's going to be a section three video, surprise, surprise, but it's going to be going through organic chemistry, how to actually work through the questions and also why you don't really need to know a huge amount of theory. You'd probably notice if you've already gone through my crash course videos, I'd recommend you go through those as well if you haven't. Um, I don't actually really go into a huge amount of detail in the actual theory for a reason. A lot of it is focused at people who really, really don't have any scientific knowledge whatsoever, then it's quite helpful. But you'll see that throughout, I'm often talking about the fact that they won't ever require you to memorize all that much, um, if anything at all. They wanna see that you can adapt to different things and understand the language of chemistry, specifically organic, and also being able to understand what's being presented to you in an organic reaction pathway. What we're going to look at today is basically how I go about tackling these kinds of questions. I do a lot where I'm kind of saying, you know, here's the theory or here's the step-by-step -step process. Um, I know people have gotten a lot out of my section three sample questions where I kind of do the worked examples and show how I would tackle them at the same time uh, where I write the questions. Um, this one here is not one that I've written. So for the purpose of me proving that the way that I approach them is no different, right? So I don't write questions for the sake of having them match to the way that I, I work. Uh, doesn't matter what the question is, I will take the same approach to it. And even though I actually have a science background, I don't actually try to rely on that knowledge at all because I know it leads to traps. If I'm using outside knowledge, it's probably going to lead me astray. So if you're still feeling a little bit kind of overwhelmed by the topic of organic chemistry, don't worry too much. It becomes a bit more of a visual pattern. So you want to be looking at it as shapes. You want to be looking at it as elements, um, not chemical elements. And you want to be looking at the generalized pattern of where things are going so that you can get summary information that you're then going to apply to lots of different chemicals. You don't need to know the names of them. You don't need to know their properties. You just need to be able to find the pieces that you were seeing in the generalized pathway that was given. So if we go through this example that I've got here, we're told all this information in the stem. So we're told if an organic compound has OH attached to an aliphatic carbon, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even gonna read that. What I would do in timed conditions, I won't bore you with me reading it, is I would scan it, check to see if there's anything that I'm not familiar with that I should be paying attention to. Um, but if it's all theory that I'm already familiar with, I will skip it. So in this case, actually, when I like, this is, this is my second time going through it because I wanted to make sure that the way I'm going to explain it is going to make sense and not have me stopping and stalling all the way through. But when I went through this the first time and had no idea what I was looking at, uh, I just went at it backwards where I was like, I'm just going to understand the pathways and I'm going to answer the questions based on my understanding because that is how I do most organic pathways. If I can see there's lots and lots of text, that tells me maybe there's some kind of key bits of information in there and I might try to sift those out, definitions of weird chemical compounds or classes of compounds and things. But otherwise, it looks like it's just a reaction pathways question. So we look at this here and it says reduction via sodium borohydride, blah, blah, blah. And it gives me these two things. So all I'm looking for is what's actually happening to the compound when this happens. So I add this, I'm going to call it a NAB thing, right? If I add NAB to it, what happens to the compound? It doesn't seem to change its overall shape all that much. It just seems to be adding a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. Cool, now I've got an understanding of it. This one here, I'm visual, visually mapping it as well. It's the exact same thing, right? Hydrogen here, hydrogen here. Now I might look, why did they give me two of the same thing? This one says aldehydes are reduced to form primary alcohols. Aldehydes being things that have this group on the end. So I might use a little bit of my knowledge to be familiar with it, but I don't even have to really recognize that. Um, and then a primary alcohol is something that has an OH on the end carbon. Whereas ketones, which is this kind of structure where the double bond is in the middle of the chain, that then forms a secondary alcohol where that alcohol group is in the middle of the chain, right? So in that case, I think I've got a pretty good understanding of that. Just adds a couple of hydrogens where that uh, double bonded oxygen is. Cool. Next one is Grignard reagents. And truthfully, this is one that like, I remember learning it in uni. I threw it in the bin as soon as I realized I never had to use it again. But there it is, all the information that I need anyway. I don't actually need to use my university degree whatsoever to understand it, but still I'm just looking at what's happening. So I go, okay, I've got two reagents here. Whenever I see anything that doesn't have carbon in it and it has metals and halogens, I think of those as glue points and all you're doing is gluing the pieces together, right? So if you had two pieces of paper and you tried to stick them together, they're not gonna stick. That's like your hydrocarbons. You put a bit of glue on one side, MGBR or um, 
HX or like, yeah, X is representing halogens or chlorines or anything like that. That's like your glue and now you're able to glue them together. And so that means that the points that are gluing together must be facing each other and that will then form the actual compound that I'm trying to build. And I can see the MGBR is not in the product. So I try to trace where everything came from. So I go, okay, I can see this piece here. I can see it repeating there. And I go, okay, that's basically that whole compound. So where did the other compound go? So it looks to have kind of twisted in my mind. It seems to have rotated a little bit. There it is there. I don't really care so much about the rotation, more so just about that I can account for everything that is on that product. And the only thing I've noticed is the double bonded oxygen seems to have become an OH. So I go, okay, cool. So basically this glues to this, wherever the MGBR is, that's where it glues to the carbon with the double bonded oxygen. And don't forget the double bonded oxygen becomes uh, an alcohol group. That's kind of my summary to myself. I'm not trying to think about what the actual name of that compound is. I'm just focusing on where the pieces go every time. And then it seems to be doing it again, except now it's talking about aldehydes and secondary alcohols. So I'm getting a bit of a pattern like with the first one. And I go, can I use my same thinking? I go, all right, this comes off, glue that onto there. This becomes H, can I match all that? And I can go, yep, there's my CH32, there we go. Glues onto a carbon. There's the old double bonded oxygen. And here's the methyl group of this one over here. So again, if I match that, because that's probably a little bit messy, let me just color code that again. So I can find all of this here. Actually, no, I did it in black. I can find all of this over here. And things have to rotate a little bit to fit, but this little piece here is backing onto there and the MGBR was my glue. This disappeared. And if we follow the same thing, it doesn't matter that you've got a cyclic uh, uh, hydrocarbon here same compound, same structure again. So this is gonna go, that's gonna be my glue. My methyl group is say here, or I might just for neatness, put that one there. And then I can find everything else. There, I've got this kind of L shape. It's just backwards. There it is there, done. Now I understand the pathway and I should be able to answer every question because the stem is done. So now I'm just gonna apply that thinking. So it says in an acidic aqueous solution, which of the following could produce cyclohexyl methanol? So I look at this, all right, how do I get that? So it has to have this ring in it, but of course everything has the ring in it. But the difference is that it's giving me certain pairs. So I can carbon count here. This one's already got a carbon attached, right? So it can't have another carbon attached. Otherwise it'd be two carbons. I can only see one sitting outside the ring. So that's a problem. The other thing is this doesn't have MGBR in it like we saw before. This one over here has MGBR, but it already has a carbon containing group here and we're gluing another carbon, so that's wrong. This one has already a carbon and another carbon containing group, so that's wrong. This one does not have any carbons. It immediately has the MGBR, the glue. And then we're gonna attach a carbon to it and that would make sense why there's one carbon there, right? So it attaches, I've drawn that a little bit wonky and then this would all join and this would become OH. And that then matches with this structure. So I know my answer is D without any chemical knowledge whatsoever. If we go again, I might zoom this in a little bit further now, like this. So we can just keep practicing this. We've got like eight questions here to do um, just to keep proving that it doesn't matter uh, what the scenario is, you can keep using this kind of very visual way of looking at organic chemistry questions. So uh, in an acidic aqueous solution, which of the following could produce this structure? I don't even look at the name. I just look at the structure because I just look at it as a visual game, basically. It's a puzzle or Lego pieces is often how I refer to it. So this time it's got two rings on it. And if I look at my options, already B looks pretty good but I could have had two ring structures being glued together to form a double ring structure. So that means that D is also a possibility. Immediately C and A can't be because they don't contribute two rings total. If I look at D, because that's a possibility, the glue point is here, which means if I have to glue it to the thing that has the double bond, I'm gluing it onto this carbon here, right? And that is already part of the ring. So I would immediately have a ring structure attached to it with an OH hanging off. 
which does not match. There's an extra carbon between them. Um, whereas with B, we've got the double, the double ring there. So most of the structure is there. And all it would mean is that we're using this NAB thing, which we saw in the first one. And what did that do? That just added hydrogens. And there we go. It matches, perfect. So therefore my answer is B. So the next one again, we've got another pathway here. Which of the following is likely the product of the reaction in the following? I see how I don't read the whole thing. I just kind of, as soon as I see the names, I just skip it because I don't want to get confused by that. I just look to the diagram. So what happens if I glue these together? So I cut this off. I glue this onto here and this becomes an OH. So I try to redraw it. <laughs> is that a hexagon? <laughs> Let me redraw that. That's terrible. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this becomes an OH and attached to it, I have CH2, CH3. Bang, there's my answer A. So I'm immediately determining the answer. 46, another one. You'd never get this many, I don't think, in a STEM like this because it's a little bit repetitive. This is not an ACER question, um, but it's there to prove the point. These Individually, they're all quite good questions. Which of the following reactions in acidic solutions would result in the production of this thing? I'm going to look again, where's that alcohol group? So that's where all the attachment happened. And I might just go by process of elimination in this case and see what would happen if I glue them together. So with this one, the BR is in the wrong spot. It's close to the double bond. It's not far away. So already that one's out. So with this one, yeah, BR is already in the middle of the chain. I don't really like the look of that one. Um, and so it's here it says the bromine's on the end. So therefore that one's out. C, I'm gonna look at the structure again. This time the bromine's way out on the end, but if we remove this and attach this to the other side of the double bonded oxygen, let me just redraw that. This would become OH. We get CH2CH2, CH2Br. And down here we would get our methyl group like that, which matches there. It's rearranged like, the hydrogen is pointing down in the in the diagram and we've got it pointing to the left but they're still it's still attached to the same carbon so therefore c is my answer so imagine like if i didn't have any chemistry knowledge i'm still able to answer this question right like you don't actually need chemistry knowledge to answer a lot of these sometimes understanding the naming and things can be relied upon but often they will do this they'll give you the diagram as well so you don't really always need to be able to interpret the names which of the following carbonyl uh, or carbonyl compounds could be used to prepare blah, blah, blah. Yet another one. So this one just says could be used. It's not giving me all of the reagents, just what could be involved in it. So I have to go by process of elimination here to consider all bases. So if I look at the first one, it's got an alcohol group. There's no, uh, there's no double bonded oxygen attached to it. It's already got an alcohol group, which makes me think probably not it already. Uh, B looks a little bit better because we've got a double bonded oxygen, but I've got to count where it's attached. So this one has the alcohol group off of uh, an end carbon. And this one is not on the end carbon. It's in the middle of the chain. So therefore, that one is out as well. So with C, um, we can see that we've got CHO here, which does not match to what we've got over here. And the other problem is we've also got this missing, which is a whole nother reaction that needs to glue on. There's lots and lots of things wrong there. Um, and so therefore we would not be able to prepare that in one step. There's a lot of differences there. You could individually actually reduce this into this and then you could separately attach, but um, you would need another double bonded oxygen, which we don't have. So therefore that one's out. Uh, and then finally, this one here almost looks exactly the same, right? It's visually, I'm just looking at it. It's kind of like a cross on its side like this. So I can see that shape there and I go, well, what's different? And the only difference is this says CHO, this says CH2OH. How do I turn that into that? So if I draw that out, even if I don't know where it's going, I just draw it out full structural. I go, oh, that's an aldehyde structure. If I were to reduce it, because we had those NAB formulas, I can just put a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here and then make that a single bond like they were doing. And that then becomes CH2OH. So that could be done. So this could be used, it could just be reduced into the structure. So the answer is gonna be D. And then with 48, which of the following will not form as part of a, or as a product of the following? Or will not form, yeah, as a product. So in other words, which reagents won't make this? 
So again, if I just try to glue them together, here's my glue point here on this double bonded oxygen carbon. And over here, here's my glue point. If I attach this chain over to here, then I get carbon. This would become OH. There's a CH3 pointing one way, so that's good, that's good. And I've got a three carbon chain pointing off of it as well. That's good, and then the benzene ring. That all matches, so that one's fine, so therefore it's not my answer. B, I do the exact same thing. Cut this off, attach the methyl group here, CH3, OH, just like draw it like that. And again, it's the exact same structure, right? So it would make that as a product, so therefore it is not our answer. Uh, then with C, with this one here, this is now our glue point. We attach the benzene ring over this way, like that. And then we count all of the bits and pieces. And again, we've got our alcohol group, our methyl group, our three carbon chain and our benzene ring. So that's all fine. That's exactly the same again, different orientation. And then finally, this last one, the MG is in the middle. There is no MGR. Um, uh, sorry, MGBR, and so therefore this cannot glue, so that's already not looking great. Um, they've put the bromine over here, which doesn't, doesn't make sense. It has to all be together, otherwise it wouldn't be matching. And so therefore that's got problems, so therefore that's the one that would not produce it. So I'm doing it all based on the arrangement and the position of everything. Having no idea about the chemistry of it whatsoever, you can still answer the whole thing. Understanding what is happening in the pathway in your own terms is the most important thing. And then you just apply that ruling in any of the other scenarios. Sometimes they ask you to go forward. So just put two reagents together and predict the product. Other times they go backwards. They give you the product and they say, what was it formed from, right? That's pretty much everything with reaction pathways uh, for organic. So hopefully this one was really helpful and revealed why you don't need to be pouring over textbooks, learning all the different reaction pathways. I mentioned some of them in one of my crash course videos. I think it's the second one. But uh, you, the second of the organic, I think it's the third episode of the whole chemistry course. Um, I put them in there just so that you're familiar and ready for them when they do pop up, but you don't need to memorize them whatsoever. They always summarize them in the, uh, in the stems. Cool, all right. As always, hopefully it was helpful. Like it, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one.